Good afternoon. Uh, let's get started with our lecture for this afternoon. And today, the material that we are going to cover is the last material that is going to be part of your first exam. So your first exam is going to be on Monday, September the 27th. On um, Wednesday, we're going to have a review in which I'm going to uh, explain the format of the exam and also I'm going to go over the, the material that is going to be included. And we will also discuss some of the problems for, from the homework and some other problems that just to get you in good uh, or to prepare you for the exam. Uh, so that will be on Wednesday and then on Monday, we will have our first exam. The exam is going to be in class. So you have to come to class for the exam. And it's going to be an hour and 20 minutes that you will have to work on the exam. Any questions? So more information about the format uh, will be given on, on Wednesday. Um, so the lecture for today is uh, the continuation on the lecture that we started uh, two lectures ago. Uh, we had the lay layout planning models and design algorithms. This is the second part. On the previous lecture, the one on Wednesday, we went through some practical examples for uh, one of the methodologies. We discussed three problems. Uh, one of them was looking at a more uh, simple scenario. Uh, the second one was looking at the design inside a, a department. And then the third one was looking at the location of departments in, in a facility. Uh, so today we are going to continue that discussion. We're gonna focus on some new algorithms, specifically on this craft algorithm. Spend most of the time of the lecture on that algorithm. And then we're gonna cover uh, some similar ones uh, towards the end of the lecture. So let's let's get started. Um, so here are the objectives. Uh, as always, I show you these, these objectives at the beginning of the, of the lecture. And we are working on most of them right now, uh, understanding the principles of facility location, layout, uh, learning formulation models, and analytical procedures for the study of facilities layout planning, and uh, be able to design layouts, incorporating product process and personal requirements. So again, we, we are gonna spend most of the, of the hour looking at some new algorithms uh, for the design of facilities. We are going to focus on that last bullet, the algorithm approaches. And the idea for this lecture or for you in terms of learning objective is to under, understand the interactions between layout planning models and design algorithms as they relate to facilities planning. Okay, so again, this is something that we started a, a week ago, but now we're gonna be focusing on, on some new algorithms. So the layout procedures presented in our first part of this lecture, provide a framework to construct or improve a layout, but they don't, know, don't provide a formal procedure or algorithm for some of the critical steps associated with the layout design and evaluation. See, most of them rely on these qualitative aspects, these rankings. Uh, if you remember our previous lecture, we were providing um, these ranks in terms of the, the relationship between uh, departments and then using that information to allocate the departments in, in a space. But the quantitative aspect was very limited. Um, so now we're gonna be looking at algorithms that are including that quantitative aspect into the decisions. The models and algorithms we present in this section provide us with objective criteria to facilitate the evaluation of different layout alternatives that emerge in the process. So most of the layout algorithms can be classified according to the type of input the data they requires. They could be qualitative flow of data, such as the relationship charts, quantitative flow data, such as flow matrix expressed as a from two chart. So one of the labs that we did in class, it was the, 
the video recording lecture that we had at some point. Uh, there was a lab on that video lecture that was looking at for you to construct this from two charts. So those are quantitative flow data. And then some algorithms accepted both relationship charts and also the front two chart. So the front two chart basically give us some idea in terms of the interactions that are happening between departments. So how much flow you have between department A and department B. The higher the flow, you wanna have those departments close to each other. Layout algorithms can also be classified according to their objective function. So if you are familiar with operation research, uh, this is basically two objectives that are expressed in a mathematical fashion. You can have them minis minimizing the sum of close time distances. So you want to max minimize the amount of movement, basically, that is happening in your facility. You don't want to be traveling too far. And if the amount of flow that needs to happen between those two areas is very high, you want to close, put them close to each other. So that objective is minimizing the total flow times the distance. So the amount and the distance that is traveled, we want to put, want to minimize those amounts as much as possible. The second objective function is to maximize the adjacency score. So if you are trying to put departments that have a very high flow together, you want to maximize that closeness between those departments. And those two are expressed in mathematical ways here. So that have the distance-based objective in which we are trying to minimize the summation of the flows times the distances. So that's on the left. You see F represent the flow, meaning the amount that are that is being transferred between departments. I represents one of the department, J is the other one. And you have CIJ, uh, that could be the cost of moving, uh, the distance for a specific distance. And then we have the distance uh, from department I to J. The summation of those multiplications, you're trying to maximize that expression. And then the adjacency score, basically you want to maximize the flow from department R to department J. And XIJ is, is gonna represent the adjacent of departments I and J in the layout. So the closer they are to each other, the higher these value XIJ. And you are trying to maximize that summation. Okay, so that being said, let's look at some of the algorithms. Uh, we're going to start with today with the, the graph. We discussed the graph based method in our previous lecture. So now we're going to continue the discussion with the graph method. We're going to talk about the M graph as well and the MIP or mixed integer programming. And that will be the, the end. As you can see in this list, there are other um, methods, but we in this class, we're going to be focusing on those that are in red. So let's talk about CRAFT. Uh, and CRAFT stands for Computerized Relative Allocation of Facility Technique. Okay. So this algorithm is an improvement algorithm, which means that you need to start with something. There is a facility already in place and you are trying to improve that facility. Um, so it's not a construction algorithm. Right? We talk about the difference between those two. Uh, so it's, instead of starting from scratch, you are starting with an initial solution and then you're trying to improve that solution using the algorithm. It uses a discrete representation, meaning that uh, you have specific number of departments, distance, and so on. And uses the front two matrix that we we talked about in the previous lecture, so we have some information about how much is the flow between departments. We also have information about the distance. So in terms of finding the best location for my department, I'm going to be looking at this objective of uh, minimizing the, the cost associated with movement and distance. 
and it allows for pairwise exchange, meaning that we can uh, switch two departments at a time and then find the, the level of improvement after switching two departments. This algorithm uh, was introduced in 1963 and it's being used, it's still being used for uh, designing facilities. And CRAB is a tool used to help improve the existing layout of the facility. Facilities improved by switching two or three departments to help arrange the facility in an optimal floor plan. Uh, this computerized related allocation of facility technique requires the following inputs. As I mentioned, we are gonna use information about the front two chart, the cost, cost matrix, and the distances. Okay, so that being said, let's let's start uh, looking at the, the algorithm itself. Uh, what are the steps of the algorithm? How are we gonna use all this information? Uh, we're gonna be doing some math today with the with the algorithm and and so on. So the major features of this algorithm craft, it attempts to minimize the transportation cost. So what is the transportation cost? Is the multiplication of the flow times the distance times the unit cost. Okay, so we are gonna be looking at these three dimensions. Every time that we do a pairwise exchange, we are gonna be computing this transportation cost. If we find a cheapest uh, scenario or cheapest layout, then we are improving, meaning that we can find a better layout because we can reduce the cost associated with the flow in the facility and the distance that needs to be traveled between departments. Uh, craft is a path oriented method. The final layout is depending or dependent on the initial layout. So I mentioned this is not a construction algorithm. This is an improvement algorithm. So we're gonna start with an initial layout. And then using that initial layout, we're gonna find ways to improve the current layout. It requires an assumption that move costs are independent of the equipment utilization and that move costs are linearly related to the length of the move. So we are gonna be computing some distances um, when applying this, this algorithm. And then with those distances, we're gonna also find out about the, the flow that is happening between those two departments. And then we're gonna compute the transportation cost of exchanging the location of two departments at a time. And move to the next slide. Okay, so what are the steps of the algorithm? They're listed here. We are gonna start by determining the department centric. How are we gonna determine this? We're gonna look at the, at the design. Most likely we're gonna have a square uh, paper and we're gonna be counting blocks to find the, the distance, rectilinear distances between the centroids of each of the departments. Then we're gonna calculate the interdepartment rectilinear distances from centroid to centroid. And using that information, we calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the front two matrix with the cost matrix. Craft then considers all the possible two-way or three-way department exchanges and identify the best exchange. So we start with an initial layout. We do all possible exchanges. And then we identify the one that gives you the 
minimum cost. You find that exchange that gives you the minimum cost, we update the centroids, and then we repeat the process. We stop when we find out that the, there's no additional exchange that will improve the minimal cost that you have found so far. Okay, so it's an iterative process. Start, compute the distances. We know we have a benchmark. Then we start doing the pairwise exchanges. We compute the cost for each one of those exchanges. We find if any of those exchanges is giving you a better cost let's say a, a cheaper cost than the benchmark. If that's the case, then you keep that exchange, you update the centroids, and then you go back and try another set of exchanges and you will stop until no better solution can be found. So we update the, the layout and calculate the new department centroids. The above procedure is repeated until no further reduction in the cost can be obtained. Okay, so we're gonna work on a couple of examples to illustrate the, the algorithm. So let's, let's look at the first one. And we're gonna follow the steps that are listed here in order to solve the problem. Okay, so this is the, the layout facility that we have. Uh, you can see we have eight departments. Uh, those dark spots are representing the centroids. And you see that each department has a different size. Um, they have also different shapes, depend on the size um, and so on. Different shapes, you might have different shapes, but the same area. So the chain might be different, but the area could be the same for a couple of those departments um, and so on. So the first thing we're gonna do is to find the centroids for, for these uh, eight departments. And I'm going to use the table on the right to uh, list those centroids in terms of X and Y. So, First thing I have to do is to identify what I'm going to use as my um, origin. So I'm gonna use zero, zero on this corner. If you choose another corner, that's fine. As long as you are consistent, you should end up with the same answer. But I'm gonna use that corner. And then I'm going to, um, this is my X and this is my Y. So for each one of those departments, let's start with the first one, department one, I'm going to find the centroid. So for this one, there'll be three and three. So the centroid for department one is three, three. For department number two, this will be on 13, and this is two. So department number two is 13 and two. And the process is, I mean, you continue until you find all centroids for the eight departments. So let's go for three. This is gonna be right here in the middle. 16.5, sorry. And this is gonna be eight. So this is 16.5 and eight. Number four, we have this 9.5. And this is seven, 9.5 and seven. Number five, we have three and seven. 
number six, we have 9.5 and this is 9, 10, 11. Number seven is right here. This is 1.5 and this is 10. So 1.5 and 10. And finally, department eight, we have four, five, this is five, and this is 10, so it's five and 10. Let's see, 4.5, I'm sorry, that's 4.5. Okay, so those are the centroids for this uh, layout. Okay, so from here, what do we do next? Determine the interdepartment rectilinear distances. Okay, so we are going to create a matrix that is going to show the distances between centroids. So I have that table here. This is labeled distances. As you can see, I have the name of, of the departments at the top and then on the first column. Uh, we don't have to fill out the whole, all the table. I want you to focus on, on the cost here. As you can see, there's, there's a cost associated with departments one and three. The cost associated with departments one and seven, three and five, four and two, four and seven, four and eight, after five and eight, six and one, six and three, and eight and four. So why, I mean, I can definitely go and find the distances between departments for all of them, but uh, if you remember the steps, what we are trying is to minimize the multiplication of the cause times the distance. If there's no cause associated with some, some of those distances, then you know that that multiplication is gonna be times zero. So finding the distance is not gonna make a difference at the end, because you're gonna be multiplying by zero. So if you wanna save some time, you can just compute the distances for those uh, relations or departments that are showing a cost associated between them. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do actually. If we look at this from uh, cost, we have a cost associated with this one and three one and seven, one and eight, three and five, four and two, six, here, uh, some reason, and then here, in here. The rest of those costs, those are zeros. Okay, there's no cost associated with it, with them. Okay, so let's find the distances. So again, this could be a little tedious. What we are going to do is we're going to be counting. So now I wanna know the distance between one and three. These are rectilinear distances. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 and a half, 14 and a half, 15 and a half, 16 and a half, 17 and a half, 18 and a half. So this 
18.5. For 1 and 7, do the same thing. Now, 1, 1 and a half, 2 and a half, 3 and a half, 4 and a half, 5 and a half, 6 and a half, 7 and a half, 8 and a half. Then we have two and eight. So from two to eight, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven and a half, twelve and a half, thirteen and a half, fourteen and a half, fifteen, sixteen and a half. And that process needs to be repeated for all those spaces that I have uh, highlighted in blue, uh, because those are the ones that have a cause associated with them. Okay, so let's do one more, three and five. So three and five. So is one, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, five and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven, twelve and a half, thirteen and a half, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I'm sorry. Yeah. So is 14.5 then. You gotta go up to here, right? So let's do that again. One, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen and a half. So it's 14 and a half. Thank you. So you understand what I'm doing, right? So I don't have to do each one of them um, the same way. I'm just gonna give you the, the rest of the values. So four and two. Say point five. And I have eleven here. Four point five. Fourteen point five. Ten. and eight. So now I found the, the distances between the centroids for those, um, for those departments that have a color associated with it. Yes. Yes, this, this table will be always given. Uh, the, the cost matrix will be given, yes. Okay, so now I have both. I have the distance and the cost. So I can calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the front two matrix with the cost matrix. Okay, so this cost is gonna be equal to the distance times this reward which is this. 
Um, so I have 20 times 18.5 plus two times 8.5. So I have these two, I have these two plus this and this. I'm sorry, I have this one first. 16.5 times one plus two times 14.5, one times 8.5, two times 11 plus one times 4.5, 10 times 10.5, five times 10, two times eight. If you do that in your calculator, it should be 678.5. So the cost associated with the current layout is 678.5. Okay, so we, come, we got the centroid, we got distances. We were able to calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the front two matrix with the cost matrix. And so we got the benchmark. This is our score to be. Uh, can we do anything in our current layout that can reduce that cost? That's our goal. We're gonna follow the, the algorithm. And now, if you remember from here, we're gonna look at two way uh, exchanges and identify the best exchange. So the question is, and this is very important. I need you to remember this. So when we are looking at possible exchanges using craft, we have two options. And those are listed here in the title, only equal areas or adjacent departments are feasible exchanges. So you can only consider exchanges for departments that are sharing a wall or departments that have the same area. So if you have two departments that are sharing a wall, you can consider that as a possible exchange. If you have departments that are not sharing a wall, they can be as far as they want, but they have the same area, you can still consider them for the exchange. Okay, so if they are not sharing a wall, the only way that you can exchange them is if they have the same area, okay? So, that being said, I have a list of possible exchanges here. Um, so for example, exchange one and two, that one is possible because they're sharing a wall. Exchange one and three is not possible because they are not sharing a wall and they don't have the same area. So that is an infeasible exchange. Exchange one and four, Yes, it's possible because you're sharing this wall. Okay, so one more time. One and two is possible, they're sharing a wall. One and three is not possible. They don't share a wall and they three is larger than, than one. So they don't have the same area. Exchange one and four is possible because one and four is are, uh, sharing one of the wall. Okay. So what that means is, in terms of the algorithm, if I say that I'm going to exchange one and two, what I'm doing is I'm exchanging the centroids for one and two. If you look here, go back. In the initial layout, 
this is the these are the this is the centroid location for one. When I consider an exchange between one and two, I'm taking the centroid from one and I'm assigning that centroid to two, which is what's happening here. And I'm taking the centroid from two and I'm assigning that to one. Is it from two? Yes. Let's rename it. Okay. So basically, uh, department one will be associated now with the location of one. Department one is going to be associated with the location of two. And we want to see whether or not that's going to create any improvement. That's the same thing that is happening here for exchange one and four. If you look at the century for one is now assigned to four and the century for four is assigned to one. Okay. So using that information, we are gonna calculate a new table of distances and then the new layout cost of all possible exchanges are evaluated. The one with the most saving is selected. And after we got to this point, let's say we say, okay, the exchange in this case is represented by one and four. So let's say this exchange is the one with the most saving. When you move forward to one and one to four, if that's the one that gives you the most savings, you select that exchange. And after that, you update the central. Okay, so you go through this process, you do this, the exchange, you compute the distance and the cost for all the possible exchanges. And then after you find the one that gives you the most savings, then you say, okay, this is the best one. I can go now and say, this is going to be fixed. I need to update the center is based on the shape. Okay, so we, we are considering the shape now after we find the one that has the most savings. One thing that you will notice is that after you find the best exchange, something like this can happen. And I know finding the center for something like this is, is very difficult, okay? So we need to rely on those uh, mechanics, statistics mechanics that we learn to find those centroids. I'm not going to ask you to do that for the purpose of the exam, okay? So don't worry about that. But uh, for the purpose of the algorithm, we are going to make sure that if an exchange is happening, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an easy way for you to find those centroids. You will see this with the, with the exam. But something like this might end up happening in, in practice. You will have to find a way to accommodate this uh, shape. Um, so let's look at the exchanges. Uh, so these exchange departments, this is the, the one that give us the savings, most savings. Uh, so again, these are the exchange centroids. You took the centroids for one were assigned to four and the centroids for four was assigned, were assigned to, to one. And using that information, then we find the new distances. Okay, so those are the new distances. What's going to happen, you look at your distance from here. The only distances that are going to change are the ones associated with one and four. The rest of the distances from your table, from this table, these distances that you computed, they're gonna remain the same because they are not affected by the exchange between one and four. But since now uh, you see this one is gonna stay the same, this is gonna stay the same, 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 same and same. But this other, now the distance between
now the distance between one and three is different because one is now located in four. So basically what we are saying now is since I'm changing, I'm making this one and I'm making this four, the distance between one and three is now this distance. Actually is a rectilinear distance. Okay, so that new distance is eight. We go between one and seven. Now the new distance is from one to seven. And that new distance is 11. Same thing is gonna happen with four. The distance between four and two is gonna be new. Four, seven is gonna be new. Because now four is in one and one is in four. Okay. So after updating the distances, we compute the new cost. I have the, the cost associated with this. So basically in this example, I'm giving you the, the solution. I'm gonna show you another example with, with the, the steps, with all the steps in a minute. Uh, so basically what this is saying in this example is this is the optimal solution. This is the best exchange that you can do. Now let's update the centroids. So after making that final decision, this is good. Uh, I need to go and use the, the original um, the original layout and put the, the new departments in the right location and compute the centroids using that new shape. And that's what you're observing here. You see these two are decimal uh, numbers or include decimal uh, numbers. So, um, and those are the centroids associated with this weird shape here. But after finding the best exchange, you have to update the centroids. And then using that information, we can compute the cost again. So the cost associated is again, the distance times the report. And in this case is 20 times 7.5 plus two times 11.5. One times sixteen point five, two times fourteen point five, one times eleven point zero seven plus two times eight point forty three plus one times four point five plus ten times four plus 10 times five, is two times 7.43. And this is equal to 355.79. So you can see that, that after going through all the possible exchanges, this being the, the best one, 355 is the, final cost, which is less by a lot than the original design as almost half. Okay, so let me show you a, an example. Let me, show you an example that is more complete. 
Um, so So here we have this layout. These shapes are more, we have only five uh, departments. And I think I posted this on, on, on the track side. I'm gonna post a solution after the class. So we would we'll, we'll like to explain the steps for craft we'll take with the following problem and determine the final layout. Uh, so we have the, the initial layout. I have the coordinates there and I have the from two chart associated with this layout, okay? Um, so Okay, so I, I created this solution using Excel just to make things clear and see if this works. So first thing you have to do is to find the centroids, right? So I have the centroids listed here and I have the, the original layout uh, at the top. From there, we compute the distances between um, departments. All right, so I have found the distances between A and B, A and C, A and D, and A and E. Um, and I did that for all possible uh, combinations. Have the, so we have the distances, and then using the front two chart and the distances, this front two chart is going to be basically our cost um, matrix. So if we follow the same uh, method that we follow on the, on the previous example, is there's nothing happening between this department E and the rest of the department, this is gonna be like a zero, right? So that cause, when we compute the cause, there's no need for us to know this distance because there's no interaction between that department and the other one. However, I decided to include the distances here just for the purpose of the example. So when we compute the initial cost, we are multiplying the front two chart, which is here, times this distance matrix. And that initial cost is gonna be 66. Okay, so you can see the colors associated with the computation there. You are multiplying that matrix times this distance matrix. And that cost equals 66. Okay, so we found the initial cost. Now we can talk about the possible exchanges. Okay, so you can see that H uh, it shares a wall with B, C, and D. So those are possible exchanges, A, B, A, C, and A, D. You can see that D shares well with A and E. So those are possible exchanges. Uh, what about C and D? What do you think? Is that a possible exchange? Yes or no? Yes, why? Same area, right, correct. That's what I wanted to hear. So even though they're not sharing a wall, they have the same area. So that's a positive exchange that we can consider. Okay, so C and D is a positive exchange and so on. So what I did with this example was to uh, read those exchanges uh, to the consideration. So A, B first. And again, I'm going to share this with you. It's a lot of uh, elementary math that I'm trying to avoid. I just want you to see the steps, okay? So, so I exchanged, the first possible exchange was A and B. G A and B, I'm highlighting those two. And the cost associated with those exchanges after finding the new distances is 
54. So that's an improvement when compared to 66. Okay, so I go to the next possible exchange, A and C. I have 53.5. After recomputing the distances and multiplying the cost, A and B, find the new centroids, find the new distances, compute the cost, 63. And C, same process, 67.5. C and E, same process, new centroid distances, new cost. C and E, new centroids, new distances. New cost 48. I found that I didn't include that last one, C and E, uh, C and D. Did I did C and D at some point? C. Okay, so it's not here, wonder why. Anyway, after I, I look at those exchanges, I find out that the best cost, 48, that's the minimum cost. And I think that happens for two of them, 66, 67, No, just for that one. Okay, so 48 happens just for one of the exchanges and that's better than 66, that's the minimum cost. I apologize, C and D, the exchange should be there and it's not included in the computation, but it should be there. So have the, they have the same area. Um, so 48 is the best, so I'm going to say after considering all possible exchanges, this is the best. So what I'm going to do now is I need to update the centroids. But as you can see in this example, that's quite easy because they both have the same area. So by flipping them, you can find the new centroids easily, right? So this is the type of example that you can see in the, in the assignments and the, the homework uh, or probably in the exam. In the exam, I'm not gonna ask you to do all this, okay? So I might ask you in the exam to look at one iteration. And let me know how you handle that iteration or I can ask you questions about that specific iteration or to complete that specific iteration. But you're not gonna do through the whole thing. But, I, but you need to know how this works. So I got the new centroids. This is the end of the first iteration. The question is, are you done? Well, the answer is no, because now with the new layout, you have to do to the sec go to the second iteration, which is on the next tab. And I'm going to start with the new layout from the previous iteration. All right, so now I have E and D, which is what we found in the first iteration. And I'm going to repeat the process. Now I'm going to start doing two ways exchanges for all possible exchanges in this new layout. The initial cost of this layout is 48. So I want to see if I can improve this layout by going through the same process of exchanging. So let's see. I did A and B, same cost. Right, no, no improvement, this is 48. Next, next exchange, A and C, 53.5, no improvement. A and E, 
BNC 49.5, CMD um, 48, no improvement. DNE 66, no improvement. And that's it. So after the second iteration, since I couldn't find any improvement, then I'm done. That layout that we found here at the top is the best layout. So I'm done with the process. You see, it's a very long, tedious process, but that's the way it goes. And this is the best layout based on, on that process. Questions? So I'm going to post this Excel file for your reference in, in the modules too. So you will, you will see that. And essentially, yes. So let's, let's close the discussion in terms of craft. Uh, the procedure adopted for using craft are determine transportation costs of each department interchange, select and implement the departmental interchange that offers the greatest reduction in transportation costs, repeat the procedure for the new layout until no interchange is able to reduce the transportation costs which is what we saw in that exam. Okay, so what are the pros of craft? Evaluate many exchanges very quickly. Initial layout can be captured accurately. And craft allows for flexible department shapes, dummy departments, meaning that you can block an area of the layout and that don't consider that fixed departments and non-rectangular buildings. The cons results in all odd department shapes, like I mentioned. Uh, limited exchange options, since we're doing these two-way exchanges only. Uh, this is a greedy algorithm. So you might get stuck in a op local optimal. If you're familiar with uh, this math uh, language, meaning that you might get there and there might be another solution that is better, but since you're stuck in your algorithm, you will not be able to find it. And craft is a path dependent. The starting layout makes a difference. So those are the cons. Um, an extension to, to craft and it's called micro craft. And this requires some PC implementation. This is similar to craft except it can exchange two non-adjacent departments. The layout formation technique that allows easy shifting of departments in this algorithm facility divided into bands. The layout formed by starting at the upper left hand corner of the building and sweeping the bands in, in a serpentine fashion. Two-way exchanges form until no further improvement is achieved. So this is the idea. You have this uh, band. In this case, we have three. You can split it here and here. And you're basically doing exchanges using those bands until no further improvement is found. The limitations of this is that may be hard to fit the existing factory layout into these bands. The band width assumed to be same for all bands. And a fixed department may float when certain non-equal area departments are exchanged. So in this example for craft, we have two departments that are fixed, one and seven. And then we have some information about the flow between these departments, one through eight, or A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and H. Uh, we have the area and we have the number of grids. We're gonna to try to look at this uh, using the numbers. So departments are going to be named using uh, the, num the numbers. And NCraft asks for the length and width of the building and the number of bands. So NCraft form a layout by starting on at the upper left-hand corner of the building and sweeping the bands in a serpentine fashion, follows a particular sequence of department numbers which we will refer as the layout vector or the fill sequence. 
So this is what I'm um, referring to. So you have, again, three bands in this case, and you are filling those bands using the information about the area and the, the department numbers. So the layout shown in the figure was obtained from the layout vector 1753248 and 6, which is supplied by the user as the initial layout vector. So this is our, remember, Prof is an improvement algorithm. So this is given, the initial layout is given, and now we are, we are trying to improve this layout. So NCRAP performed four iterations or four two-way exchanges before terminating with the optimal layout. Um, so we have the first iterations is between departments three and five. Uh, which has 59,611 units. Second iteration is between three and eight. Third iteration, departments three and four, and fourth iteration, departments two and three. So for this method, you will not be able to solve this by hand. Again, it's a, a computer-based uh, method. What you need to know about it is the way it works, which is by using this band, and it requires the initial information in terms of the length and the area of the, of the departments and the area of the facility that you're gonna be designing for. Um, the algorithm works in the same way that CRAP does. It allows for two-way exchanges. And then based on that, you are gonna be computing this um, new cost. Um, so in this case, based on the information that was given, this layout, optimal layout, is found in the fourth iteration after exchanging these departments. Uh, in this case, the final MCRAP layout is 57. The objective function is 57,000 units. Other methods and tools um, the mixed integer programming um, method is, how many of you are from industrial engineering? One, two, three, four. How many of you have taken operation research? All of you, okay. So the idea is to use mathematical formulation to solve this problem. If you are not from industrial engineering, don't work. It's not going to affect you in any way. Um, but the, the idea is that you can formulate this in terms of having an objective function that is gonna guide your decisions. And then you're gonna have some linear equations or formulas that are going to constrain your problem. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how that looks in a, in a minute. But for IE, that's what we are doing. We are applying operation research to try to solve this problem. Um, so for example, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is an objective function. So basically what this is doing is you need to find a solution. This is gonna tell you the direction of improvement. So you're gonna say, okay, I wanna minimize my cost. So as I move toward the solution, I'm going to be looking at this number and I know if I'm improving or not based on this number. So if I'm reducing my cost, then I'm improving. If I'm not reducing my cost, the solution is going to try to move to the direction of improvement. Meaning that any solution that improves or reduces my cost, I'm going to use as heat for the next solution. Um, and here's where the math becomes a little bit difficult. So this is the mixed integer programming formulation for this problem. Again, you don't have to memorize this. You are not going to be solving this, but uh, for for your reference, um, you know that this can be formulated as a mixed integer programming problem, in which we have a set of constraints that are going to limit the the type of exchanges that we are going to do, and we are going to be looking at improving those exchanges using that objective function. So. Basically, from this lecture, what you need to make sure is you understand how craft works. 
and then understand that there are other methods um, outside of craft that are also available, but craft is will be the most important in terms of this class. Okay, so if you focus on craft, I think there's a problem on the assignment that is the last one for the assignment, craft, uh, the craft algorithm. Um, so that will be the main focus on of this uh, lecture. In terms of questions that I can ask from this lecture, uh, you'll see that in the exam, you have uh, true or false questions, um, multiple choice questions. Inside those questions, I can ask you things about MCRAP. For example, which method uses or bands to uh, optimize the, the layout process, the, the facility layout, then you, you know that MCRAP is the one that is using BAM. Um, Make sure that you're programming, you have an objective function that is uh, directing the, the improvement for your, for your search for the department's uh, exchanges. Those questions, yeah, those are fair, but I'm not going to ask you to solve this or solve MCRAP. I, I'm, I could ask you a problem related to CRAP. Any questions? So that's all I have for this uh, lecture. So I'm gonna stop now and we'll see you on Wednesday for the review.